Lovely viewers, you are welcome once again to Rona 360. If today is your first time, kindly click on the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time we post a new video. And also subscribe so that you can join the family because we are about arts, culture, and TV. So 2016, something really historic happened. The son of Queen Elizabeth, Prince Edward, visited Menshia Palace. Yes, a whole delegation from Buckingham Palace visited Asante Mai. And today we are here to take you through that historic event, break it down so you appreciate every bit of it. If you are ready, let's go. So in 2016, Prince Edward, the son of Queen Elizabeth II, now the late Queen Elizabeth II, visited Menshia. He actually came with a whole delegation from the British High Commission and the Ministry of Sports by then. I remember by that time, the Honorable Minister, Mr. Van der Poy, was part of the delegation and they came to Menshia to sort of commend Otunfo on his Otunfo educational project but you know what it is not the educational project that is of interest to us our interest is the cultural aspect of that visit and we would want to take you through to sort of appreciate that historic event so there are three things that we actually want to talk about but before we go on today's video is proudly sponsored by veron's closet Yes, Veron's closet is in Accra. If you want ladies' handbags, shoes, slippers, perfumes, anything for gents and ladies, please contact Veron's closet. And the number to reach her on is 0240-822981. Again, we are also sponsored by Atas House of Fashion. If you want anything fashionable to wear to any occasion, look no further. Contact Atas House of Fashion. You can reach her on 0549-393953. So, what really happened on that day? The first thing that I actually want us to talk about as you are watching this video, you pay particular attention, is the beginning of the whole ceremony. You know, even though Prince Edward landed in Accra, he had to fly all the way from Accra to Kumasi before he can meet the king. What is of importance to us is how important airports in our various regions can help boost our culture and tradition. Because something spectacular happened at the airport. That is why I am stressing on, on this. You know, when the king landed at the airport, there was an entourage a big delegation from Menshia Palace waiting for the king. They welcomed him at the Kumasi airport. And guess what happened? The chief that was in charge of welcoming the prince did not do that alone. He did that and also used the opportunity to introduce the regional commanders in the Ashanti region to the prince. This is really beautiful. You see, the reason why I am touching on this is that this shows how when there is a close collaboration between our traditional systems and our state agencies, it can breed unity and growth. Even though the prince came to visit the king, Otunfo Osetutu, the king also saw it very important to use that opportunity to liaise with the state security institutions and also present them, introduce them. The reason why the king also did that is to let the white man know that we are not living in the bush. You know, sorry to say this, but you see, there is this feeling, there is this idea that people living in Africa are still living in the past. Traditional systems are sort of far apart from state institutions. Some even believe that traditional systems are in close coercion with state institutions but what the king did which was so brilliant and that shows the kind of king he is was to use that opportunity to let the prince know that 
traditional systems in Ghana do not work in isolations. We recognize state institutions and we work in close harmony with them. Long live the king. This is very brilliant. Now, after introducing the prince to these regional security heads, what happened again? In front of the prince, they poured libation at the airport. We all know the kingship system in the U UK are Anglican. They are Christians and they belong to the, the, the Church of England, which is Anglican. And so, this is a Christian prince or a prince who belongs to a system that is Christian visiting a king that has traditional authority and right in front of him. For him to know that he has truly visited a traditional leader, they poured libation. And you can see the owl and the demeanor he, he showed. He was surprised. But this is a very smart move. To let the prince and his entourage know that truly the tradition of the people of Asantiman is not dead. Even though we are living in the 21st century. Even though we are working with state institutions, we are still maintaining our tradition. Just as you, the prince, your mom, who is the queen, is maintaining your traditions, we are also doing the same here. And right after the libation, there was a beautiful display of Adwa and Kete by various traditional troops that, are, that, that were playing at the airport. So you see, one, if there was no airport in Kumase, all these things wouldn't have happened. Because all these things go a long way to promote our culture and our tradition. Imagine they came by car. They would move straight to the palace. Because these people are people who are employed. They will get something out of their sweat. This is putting food on their table. This also means that the opportunity to showcase and greet the prince with the security heads wouldn't probably have been possible. So, you see why it is important to have airports in the various regions. In fact, recently... When they just ended Kwau Easter F Festival actually took place, I heard a very important news and I was overjoyed that the people of Kwau, the businessmen in Kwau, are doing everything possible to have an airport in Kwau to boost the tourism and the cultural festivities in Kwau so that in the next two years, whenever there is Kwau or Kwau, the traffic that comes because of People coming to Kwau with vehicle will, will, will reduce. People will, will now board airplanes to Kwau. All because of a cultural festival that is going on. And this is, good, this is good news. So it will be very important for every region to have its own airport. So that at least when there are delegations coming to visit our kings, our chiefs, in the various regions when they land in accra they will fly to the region so that similar things can be done for them to boost our culture and our tradition and for me what happened at the airport was just phenomenal now let's move from the airport they've left the airport they've gone all the way to mencia and that is what i also want to talk about you see Rona 360 wants to use this opportunity to beg our regional house of chiefs, to beg the various tribes. Mencia is always a spectacle to behold. Why? It's because of how the king and Asante Man has heavily invested in building beautiful infrastructure, even the gates. The frontage of Mencia alone tells you that, Charlie, this place is welcoming. I remember I was watching a uh, I was watching a video, a Nigerian video, and when I saw the palace of the Oni of Ife, goodness, I was so blown away. The frontage alone and how the palace is well built speaks a lot. In fact, if the various tribes in Ghana are able to come together to build such beautiful palaces and edifices. For the apparent chiefs, it will really be nice. A very large plot of land 
that is solely reserved for the palace and museums and stuff because Mencia has museums, Mencia has parks and a whole lot of stuff that when someone visits the place, you wouldn't even want to leave. All because the kingdom has allocated a very big part of land. They have built all these beautiful edifices. That is what we also want to talk about. The importance of having a very beautiful palace. Imagine someone from Buckingham Palace. And you know what? Where Buckingham, uh, where Buckingham Palace is, it's so beautiful. And coming to visit you as a king, and your palace is something that is an eyesore. It wouldn't sell as well. You see. So please, our kings and our chiefs, come together, build beautiful palaces. I mean, make the front so nice so that it helps to promote our culture. That is one beautiful aspect I saw in the video that we really want to talk about and really also want to commend Otun Fuerte to and the whole of the Ashanti Kingdom. The palace is so on point. It's so nice. It's so beautiful. So now when they entered the palace, guess what happened? Once again, I throw salute for the king. I throw salute for Asante Mine. 24, 26, 100 gunshot salute. Pay, 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 pay. This is what I call beauty. This is what I call kingship. This is what I call ruling with the people. Otunfo and Asantiman did something spectacular. Long live the king. When the prince entered the, the palace, there was a guard of honor. Yes, this time round, this guard of honor was not mounted by state security institutions. No, the guard of honor was mounted by secondary schools, primary schools, JHS schools in Asantemine. And it was so beautiful. What is the highlight of that Guard of Honor was the fact that the color party in the Guard of Honor was not using the national flag. No, they were using the Asantemine flag. This is in fact, this is so beautiful. The schools who mounted this special guard of honor for the prince who had visited Ghana and had visited Otunfo Osedutu, the second Abbeyo, used the Asantemai flag. What does this mean? It means something beautiful because Buckingham Palace also has the Buckingham Guard. They have the Queen's flag. So Otunfo wanted to prove a point. In fact, Manu Kokotria, Matriasai, it's not that he wanted to prove a point. No. Nana will not prove a point to anybody. Otunfo was letting the, the prince know that if you think you have what is good in UK, we have what is best. <laughs> we have what is best. We are showing you a guard of honor and we are doing that with our flag. Now, what is also of importance to this guard of honor is that it was a deliberate thing the king did. Why, you see, if you want to pass on a tradition to children who are the future of any kingdom, you must always involve them in the ruling, in the kingship activity. So, two four, knowing the importance of this particular activity, why? The prince was here to honor Otunfo on his educational fund. And knowing the value of education, Otunfo brought junior high schools, senior high schools, and even primary schools that have cadets. And that, to me, is really beautiful. Because the king has, I mean, for such a historic event, has mounted a parade using students. And these are cadets from the various schools. Already, the cadets in the schools, the only day they get the opportunity to march or mount such a parade is during seat march. Once a year or when the school is having a speech and prize giving day. So this can be something that our various kings can also use. So that we reserve the police, the army and other state security institutions for national events and for state duties. 
so that the young ones will feel that they are part of the kingship systems in our various areas. Imagine all chiefs or all kings in their areas are using this particular system. You draw the kids and they will start attaching to the traditional systems. They will not think that traditional system is old, it's a cake or idolatry. They will not see it as being rituals or s- systems that do not make sense because they themselves have been incorporated and have been b- brought into it. And so for me, that is really phenomenal and that is so beautiful. Now to end it all, after this grand parade, there comes the grand deba. There was a full deba in Mencia for such a historic event. A deba that is worth the sort of meeting someone like the son of the Queen of England. Now, important highlight of this deba that Ronald T. want to talk about is how beautiful the deba was by allowing the various chiefs to be cladded in their numerous colorful kinti cloths. And the chiefs came in their numbers. You see, it is said in the Akan language that Abuanon Tabai and a man literally meaning that an animal is seen to be big all because of the feathers. And so, if you want to do something and you want to make it big and historic, you can do that by allowing only few people to be in attendance. And in the video, you can clearly see that not only chiefs who were in attendance, the king graciously allowed people from Kumasi who can get space in the palace to come and witness such historic event. That is allowing the people to be part of the kingship system. And the chiefs were beautifully clad in their rich kinti cloths. Now, as usual, the fact that Prince Edward had visited the king will not mean the king would truncate the usual rituals that goes on at the palace. And that is what I am happy about. When the day started, the, the prince had to wait, sit down comfortably for all the rich pomp and pageantry rituals and ceremonies that go on at the Mansia to be done. Why? It is all part of selling our culture. It is all part of telling the prince that you have visited a great monarch. I'm saying this because there are numerous occasions where when people of such caliber visit our chiefs from the various, you know, in the various regions, they would want to rush things and truncate the traditional process because, in quotes, somebody has visited a chief or king. No, we should allow the traditional system to progress so that the people will value because this is a historic event. It will be documented. It will go down in the annals of history. And that is something beautiful we want to touch about. Again, after all the ceremonies, what happened was that Prince Edward presented a gift on behalf of his mother to the king. And the king did something marvelous again. He also presented two important gifts. The first one was a traditional logo or symbol of a Santa man which was beautifully framed for the prince. And again, he was given a very rich kinti cloth. You see, it is always good to learn from the best. And I know some of these things are done in other parts of Ghana. But there are occasions where our people would want to gift people who visit us in Ghana from other parts of the world with things that they already have in their country. No! We shouldn't do that. We should give them with items that can only be found here. And you see, one thing that I even saw was was that even the souvenirs that were going around in the palace, I even saw fans. The fans that were being used in the palace only had Otunfo's picture on it. Yes, 
You see, someone might think Otunfo is being biased. No. Otunfo understands diplomacy and Nana knows the value of branding the souvenir with only himself and the Queen Mother and Mencia. Why? Because such souvenirs will be taken along with the prince to UK. And so if the prince picture is also on it, what value is it? The, the souvenir should be branded with the host. So that when you even take it to your country and you gift it out, people will attach value to it because the person who came, where he's coming from, they know him already. And that is something splendid that I think other chiefs in Ghana can also learn and incorporate. As usual, the highlight of the whole thing, which was so important, was when Prince Edward was cladded in the cloth that was given him in front of the entire Deba, and he had to go back to go and greet the king. And guess what? The king did not stand. The king did not stand up to greet the prince. Why? He is a prince. He is a prince. Otunfo is a king and only stands to greet someone who is also a king or has or has the same caliber as himself. They say iron sharpens iron. So a king. So a king greets. So a king stands to greet another king or queen. And that is very important. And so this was the historic event that happened in 2016. And I mean, it's just a beautiful spectacle to behold. How our culture was beautifully displayed by our Santamai. But Otun Fuo Osei the second. Abebio. King Solomon. As we all call him. So this is all that we have for you. We hope you appreciate our review. So if you enjoyed it, please subscribe and also click on the notification bell. And kindly like this video. We also want to hear from you what you also think about the video. So please type in the comment section and let's grow together as usual. And like I always say, if you love the arts, if you are an artist, if you love your culture as a Ghanaian, as an African, and if you cherish and love Tibet, then please stay away from harmful drugs, narcotic drugs, because drugs can destroy your life. Drugs destroy. So stay away from that.